into my eyes. Do you see fear? You come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the name of the God of Israel. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> right between the eyes! Did you see that? Anyone? Uh, of course not. Okay, then. One more time. <laughs> tally, tally! No, no! I'm trying to protect us from this Philistine. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, not that way. Come on. Back to your mom. Right, Philistine. Oh, wait. Right between the eyes. Oh, of course. That one you saw. Tally! Tally, no! I'm coming, girl! Shira! I will bring her home safely.
What you have just watched is a concept short for a musical animated feature film on the story of David and our vision is to tell it in the same quality as movies like Tangled and Frozen. This is more than a movie, this is a movement to join people from all over the world to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release. You can show your interest in investing by going to angel.com slash David. Growing up in the wild of Africa was the most incredible experience and it was there that I bumped into the most amazing character of God and fell in love with him. At the same time, I was reading David's story and it just really struck me. On one particular canoe trip on the Zambezi River where you could canoe for days and not see a human being, I was reading the scriptures and I read, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And I thought how amazing it would be to do a film that could give people all over the world a glimpse into God's heart. We grew up on a farm that had no electricity. I only saw my first film when I was 14 years old and it was such an electric experience. I was blown away by the power of film and the power of story to connect with people and move people. And from that day, I became passionate to tell a story on the life of David. The question is, can a group of farmers from Africa make a global hit that's gonna reach the world? This is in and of itself an incredible David versus Goliath story. There's an African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And in order to tell a story as big as David, we need people from all around the world to come together. Over the last 20 years, Jackie and I have just been blown away by how God has miraculously drawn talent to us. Now we have the most awesome, high quality team. Like Nathan Stanton, who spent 22 years at Pixar. Jonas Myron, a Grammy Award winning musician. Borja Montoro, a Disney animation alumni. Other talent from massive films like Big Hero 6, Tangled, Finding Nemo, Zootopia, Moana, Prince of Egypt, and many more. Our first breakout hit is Jungle Beat, an incredible and beautiful show. On our YouTube channel, we get over 2 billion views a year. We've got 7 million subscribers. We also recently released our first animated feature film called Jungle Beat the Movie. And incredibly, it was on Netflix's top 10 for over two weeks, both live action and animated feature films in the US. We are also doing a theatrical release of Jungle Beat the Movie in China later this year and are in production of Jungle Beat the Movie 2. What really excites me is if you take Jungle Beat the Movie, we produce that for $5 million. And I'd really encourage you to go and watch it on Netflix to see the quality of movie we produce for that price. And just imagine the quality of movie we could produce on David with the proper budget. With David, we considered the route of engaging with Hollywood and there is significant interest down that route. But we really felt that from a creative point of view, we need to stay the head and not the tail of this project. And it's a slingshot, like David went with a slingshot to fight Goliath. We really believe that the strategy and needs to be outside the Hollywood system for it to work. In this vein, we are thrilled to be working with Angel Studios for distribution. Angel Studios did the TV series The Chosen, which has become the world's biggest TV series on the life of Jesus Christ. The Chosen has generated hundreds of millions of views and tens of millions of dollars. We've already got $19 million of investments and need another $35 million to complete this project. We need your help to bring God's heart to the world through the story of David. Go to angel.com slash David to show your support for this project now. And let's join together to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release. Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for coming and spending some of your precious time with us. I'd like to introduce Brent Dawes, who's my fellow director on the movie. Brent is the creator of Jungle Beat, by the way, and Jungle Beat, the movie, he directed it's a movie on Netflix now. Um, I'm gonna get Brent to talk more than me later, but I'll, I'll kick off for now. <laughs> no, so a huge warm welcome. I wanted to start with a thought for everyone who's listening on this um, live stream. And I was walking down the beach the other day with my kids and just looking at the vastness of the beach, picked up one grain of sand, and I was just thinking if this one grain of sand represented 70 years and that beach represented eternity. Um, yeah, there, there's that, that line from Gladiator that says what we do on earth echoes in eternity. And I was just thinking if we can just use our lives, this one grain of sand on the beach and live it to the full for God, imagine the impact it can have on eternity. And that's what this whole David movie is about. And tonight there's a few things we'd like to tackle. Why David? Why animation? And then I'd really like to get Brent into the story side with me as to like the story process and how we go about that. But firstly, I just want to quickly kick off talking about Angel Studios. Angel Studios, why Angel Studios, by the way? Um, on our journey, we had raised $19 million. We were into production, but a huge part of the movie industry is distribution. And then we met the Angel Studios guys, and I was just blown away by their creativity, their out-of-the-box thinking, their bravery, um, their spirit of adventure. And I realized to take on this giant of trying to release an animated feature film to the level of Tangled, Moana, Frozen and release it, we needed 
we needed brothers and partners who had the same spirit of adventure and that that out of the box thinking and they were brave enough to come out and visit us spend two weeks with us and we just loved their thinking um so what we're doing with angel studios and and why i'm really excited to work with them besides their track record on projects like the chosen but also is just that community mentality building a community not just for distribution to but go on the journey of funding and so we're in a phase right now uh, where we're looking at testing the waters we're just trying to gauge interest it's not yet an official fundraising phase but we've been blown away i mean if you go to angel.com david you'll just see already the incredible support in terms of pledges and indication that there's a passion for this movie to get made and yeah tonight for those of you on the live stream we love to be competitive i would love to just try and push another fifty thousand dollars into the pledges but we'll just talk and, and connect with you guys as we go. The one thing I wanted to say as we go, if you've got questions, we'd love to answer them and particularly Brent will do most of the answering. But if you can pop your questions in the stream and the, the guys who are curating will put up your questions later. But I just want to, before we move on to the David Awards, I just want to really say Angel Studios, what an incredible partner they are on this journey. And, and we really believe we can make an incredible story full of energy, passion, music, at super high quality and we believe partnering with them can bring in building a community and then taking it to market which is a massive part of a, of a film um, so one fun little thing we're doing and um, I'll maybe get Brent to talk to this a little bit is the David Awards and um, we're just going to put up a couple of slides on the David Awards um, which Brent will just talk through with you so this is I'll, I'll just kick off and you can come to the other part. <laughs> Please do. I'm, I'm, I'm clearly very talkative tonight. <laughs> oh no, don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> um, this is an example of someone who put forward a nomination that you can read. And what we're looking for is nominations that reflect David, like how he took on Goliath, his spirit of fearlessness, his spirit of humility, of courage, and how he laid down his life for others. So while I'm talking, you can just read on screen this this one nomination as an example of what was put in. But we really want to appeal to you guys. We've all got Davids in our life. We know of Davids. They might be unsung heroes. So it can come from any walk of life, any age, from four years old to 90 years old. It doesn't matter. But, and like I remember Hannah's one, actually, this is her dad actually saved her when she was super young from a bear. And I mean, so he was a real David. He literally took on a bear and saved her life, which was awesome. Um, it doesn't have to be as dramatic or as physical as that, but that's an awesome nomination. And then there's other amazing stories about like a brother who gave his sister, donated his kidney to his sister. And any everyday story where you can see someone who's taken on a giant in their life, you can, you can nominate them. I'm just going to go through how you go about nominating. Um, and this is just a really fun thing we'd like to just get going with the community. So this award, oh, one thing. Yeah, and you want to take over from here and read these slides, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pass me the ball. Yeah. Um, so, and before I say this, like my one example a couple of weeks ago when I was on the other live stream is if, if we were allowed to nominate, I was going to nominate my daughter because she, um, she had a talent show to do at school. She, she wasn't very good at singing. And when she recognized that, she was like, dad, I'm so bad. And I said, okay, well, you're not going to do it. She said, no, I'm still going to do it because it's a good experience. And I just thought that was just so courageous. And she, she went and did it wasn't fantastic <laughs> but she was brave she was brave yeah, and yeah. and because she took that step she actually she can actually now really sing you know i think if she'd sort of shrunk back at that point she would have um maybe lost mm. that passion um but but to me that was a uh, that was a, a wonderful example of of that sort of you know conquering a giant spirit and so here it says here those who exhibit the true spirit of david fearlessness humility compassion loyalty bravery and honor um, and we've, we've come up with the award that you can get is um, this beautiful piece of concept art that Phil and myself will sign. Um, so you'll get, uh, you know, a, an original piece of art signed by the directors of the movie, which is, which is quite a fun thing to do. And we've got about 800 classic pieces. So it could be this one, it could be another one. We'll select for the winners and there'll probably be five winners. But we'll print it out beautifully and, and sign it. So that will be one part of the prize. We'll reveal more as we go, but that'll be one aspect, yeah. And then I'll let you go through how you do it. Oh, no, okay. okay so, I do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the way you submit it is it's the hashtag David Award nomination. You tag us and take tag your nominee on our Facebook page or our Instagram page, at, which is there. Our Facebook page is at the David Movie. 
and the Instagram page is at the David Movie Official. So you just put hashtag David Award nomination, tag us, tag your nominee, and then really put in your story about them and why you're nominating them. And then we'd love to share their story with the world. And then at, towards the end of November, we're going to have a, a guest, a very special guest come and present five winners. And yeah, we'll keep revealing as we go what else will be in the awards. But we just love to start getting those stories and nominations. So please, please feel free to join in and participate in this. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, so what else are we going to do tonight? I think the main thing, Brent, and I would like to talk you through as directors on a movie, some of our process, but with a specific focus on story is where we're going to get to and, you know, answer your questions. I just want to say, for those of you who are just joining, the whole purpose of this live stream is just to start sharing our story and our vision and just gauge interest. So we're just trying to gauge how much interest would there be from the crowd to support if we went to a funding phase. So if you're interested in pledging and supporting, you can go to angel.com slash David. And sorry if I repeat that quite a few times, it's just for those who keep joining, just to show you where you can go, because that's our real goal is just to gauge interest and share our, our vision and our story. And if you can see on the screen there up to date, which is incredible, hey, we've had 11,588 people pledge, and it's already at $10.5 million, which is, that's mind blowing, the support and the passion to tell one of, you know, the Bible's, the story of one of the Bible's main and biggest heroes um, who can just inspire us. So, um, yeah, get those questions going. I'm just going to kick off with the early days of Sunrise, because Brent and I have actually been together, well, I've lost track, but maybe 20 years. 21, yeah. 21. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just want to tell you two quick stories about Brent, but I'm going to ask him his memories of the early days of Sunrise and where we started. Then I'm going to get onto why David, why animation, and to story. But quickly, Sunrise a story. So my personal story, very quickly, was, and Brent's actually also, was he was born in Zimbabwe. Where I was born in the great outdoors is where I just saw thunderstorms, I, I saw lion and buffalo, and just witnessed this incredible energy and passion, which just introduced me to God. And I was like, whoa, this personality is just incredible, electrifying. Not only is he passionate and adventurous and he's got a sense of humor, but if you look at a little beautiful flower, oh, Kathleen, thanks. Eh? We just saw, oh, that's a massive pledge. So thank you, Kathleen. Kathleen just pledged $5,000 and another one for 500. So thank you, guys. We really, that's so awesome just to get that support. Thank you. And, and for me, as I went on that journey, I was like, this personality of God, I saw it in David. And if you saw in the video at the beginning, it says in Acts, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And I was like, wow, this was 20, over 20 years ago when I was at university. I was like, if we could tell a story about David, it would just be incredible how it could connect people, open people's hearts and minds to the incredible character of God. So this, this imagination about doing the story on David started well over 20 years ago. I'm going to tell you two quick stories about Brent. I'm going to ask him his early memories of starting at Sunrise. But our first movie, by the way, um, and just thanks. Eh? The pledges are amazing. Just watching them on the bottom of the screen. Thank you. That, that's just so exciting. And, sure. and another 5,000, which I'm, I'm blown away. By the way, if you convert that to our currency, you've got to multiply by 15, which is amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you. No, two stories about Brent. The one was we were doing a stop frame animation. Um, which is incredibly laborious and takes years to make. We made a feature film. We actually made Africa's first animated feature film called The Legend of the Sky Kingdom, and we made it out of junk. So along the streets in Zimbabwe, people made this beautiful art out of wire and copper and rubbish, made these characters. So we took that art form, we put it into model animation, we made it. And that's when Brent first started at Sunrise, and he said, and there's Brent there working away at the <laughs> animation. And Brent took a vow. He shaved his head. And then he said he'll not cut his hair until we finish the movie. And I just want to say, by, by the end of the movie, Brent looked like Samson. <laughs> so <laughs> that just gave us a gauge of how long the movie took. Um, I've got one other story to tell about Brent, but I'll save that for the storytelling phase. Brent, okay. I don't know if you've got any stories about the early days and joining Sunrise and just our journey of getting started in storytelling. Yeah, so I, um, <clears throat> like Zimbabwe of all places, to 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 get into animation, that, that's, that's not a usual thing. Um, I studied drama and I um, went back to Zim and, and drama is not a, a, a huge industry <laughs> there either. So I got into advertising, but I knew within me that uh, advertising was not my calling or my, it wasn't my passion. And my brother-in-law happened to be working on this project um, with Phil at the time. Um, he was the art director. And 
and I just love the way that Phil uh, and the team went about it. They just kind of just started. They, they had a, a director, uh, a writer and director, and then an art director. So I think the three of them just started. Then they realized, oh, they need some um, extra support. So they got another artist. They needed someone to build a gantry for the camera. So they, um, so, so they got that. And then they got to a point after about a year of development, they're like, well, actually, we need someone to animate this thing. Um, <laughs> and my brother-in-law suggested it to me because I, I had studied drama and I had played with stop motion growing up and and as soon as he said it to me something deposited with within me mm. it, uh, it felt right I went and visited the studio I met with Phil and, and his wife Jackie and it, and it just aligned for me I'm a belief led person um, vision led and I just really bought into um, the vision of Sunrise and what they were doing. And so uh, quit my job in advertising, uh, joined the studio. My first um, day of animation is the first scene of the movie. So it was absolutely just <laughs> a bunch of people coming together and, and, and doing something, which like Phil said, turned out to be making history, which we didn't know at the time, you know, Africa's first an animated feature film, which is quite a thing. Um, and so, and, and I remember at the time, uh, Phil had written a book called The Legend of the Sky Kingdom, and he'd also written a book called The Eighth Son on the Life of David. And the director of The Legend of the Sky Kingdom, Phil was chatting to him before they started making a movie. And Phil said, look, I've got these two stories, which one shall we make? And he was like, ah, oh, let's make this one. It, it'll work well with stop motion or what have you. So <laughs> I'd be fascinated if he had chosen The Eighth Son, what the David movie would have looked like then. But yeah. um, it just shows how long the story has been around. And yeah, and, and I must say, so that original vision um, that that caught my eye and caught my attention um, coming into Sunrise has absolutely endured and, and is stronger than ever. Like that's the one thing I can say about Phil and, and Jackie is they've got a, a true north wh where they're going and it's to make uh, world-class feature films that touch and inspire um, as wide an audience as possible. And, and it's been 21 years. <laughs> and we're finally getting to to make the movie that um, kind of started started the whole thing, really. Yeah. You know? no, Courtney, thanks. My two-year-old is asking to watch Davy again. Something <laughs> really struck with her. We're so looking forward to this coming out. That's awesome because, yeah, if, yeah, is it a two-year-old? That's, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> that's so cool. That's so lovely um, to hear. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah. The other thing I just <laughs> wanted to say, if you heard the video at the beginning, my wife was talking and saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think that's it's an African problem. I think it's so incredible. It speaks to the spirit of sunrise that we're a family and we go together. But also what excites me about this route we're looking at with you guys as the crowd and as, you know, potentially working with us on the movie is that building that community. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's why I love the Angel Studios model of building communities and, and working together with communities to do great things. Um, so, yeah, thank you. And, and in that regard, just to keep reiterating it, if you go to angel.com slash David, that's where you can just show your interest if you'd like to. And, um, yeah, thank you. There's been so many pledges coming in while we're talking. It's hard to actually keep up, but just really appreciate all of you who are pledging. Um, from small amounts to big amounts, it, it, all, it all matters. And, like, so, yeah, there's another one of $150. Thank you so much. Eh? That's amazing. I, I've kind of answered why, David. Um, I just, I'll just touch on it one more time for those of you just joining. Why a story on David and my passion for this telling a story on David and why it's been in me for 20 years and why I think Brent's going to be the most incredible director to work with on bringing it to life. Brent's got this incredible sense of energy and humor and pacing um, and, I'm, and I'm hoping that I can bring with the heart that I've had in my mind for 20 years to the story as well. Um, why David? That verse from Acts said, I found in David son of Jesse a man after my own heart. And I just really want to tell a story that connects with the world. Like, so it's, it's, it's not just for Christians. It's for the whole world, this movie. It's for people. I think this movie and his story can move people and can open a window into God's heart because he's just such a passionate character. And he's the one human who God said, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. So there's a clue there. If we look at David's life, we get a picture of God's life and, and his heart. And that's, that's what excites me about the movie. And also, he's just the most awesome, fun character to tell a story on. His adventures and music, and it's just an incredible melting pot. Yeah, and also what's, what's um, amazing about the story of David, it, it, it is a, a biblical story, but it's one that is in the language of, yeah. uh, of the world. You know, uh, David versus Goliath, that is a known thing. 
um, and and so so we've gotten in to tell a story um, to to a, a really wide audience um, that will recognize it, but but there's going to be significant uh, elements in there that they, they won't know anything about, which is which is really exciting. Yeah, which we yeah. we'll, we'll get, get to story we'll now. Get to soon, actually, I'll, I'll dive into anim why animation mm. because I've got my favorite catchphrase on why animation. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, why animation? Because originally, when I thought of the David movie, I was thinking about movies like Braveheart, Gladiator, doing a live action version. I, absolutely, there's a place for that. But then the one thing that struck me about animation is animation has this power to cross race, cultural, age, and gender barriers better than any other medium. And if we wanted to make a story that would really touch the entire world in terms of all geographies and all ages and all genders, I was like, animation is the way forward. If you look at your major animated feature films, how they just go global and people of all ages love it and enjoy it from grandparents to kids to teenagers, and, and I just think it's the most beautiful medium to tell a story. And it's got its challenges um, when it comes to a, a real-life story of someone like David, but it's such a magnetic medium and one that can really translate to everyone around the world. And also, I love kids, and I, I would love to inspire kids as they start out on their journey to dream big and to open their hearts. And, and so I really wanted to tell a story that would inspire kids as well. Um, I'm going to get on to story. And, and the story process, because the, the key about David is the story. And one thing I want to say about stories is stories are like Trojan horses. They can carry a message that gets under people's defense mechanisms for good or bad and plants a seed. Stories are incredibly powerful. They've been part of human history from campfire stories to, you know, as we've moved and we've moved into the medium of film. But whatever form a story takes, a story is such a wonderful and powerful uh, vehicle in which to tell us to get messages across and they're just showing a few scenes from the the demo as we go um, and I just think animation is a beautiful way to tell a story but getting on to story I just want to tee up for Brent to talk but I just want to tell you my one brief when we first started working together I said to Brent Brent can you write me I think it was five animation shorts for a little TV series to follow up from Legend of the Sky Kingdom it was like some shorts he went away I think it was for eight weeks or something and he came back with this epic feature film that he had written. So <laughs> the one thing I want to say about Brent as a creator, he doesn't really stick to brief, which I guess is a sign of a creative genius. But um, Brent, I'm interested yeah, just to hear from you, because you actually have done some really amazing things like Jungle Beat the movie, Jungle Beats, and a lot of massive sports projects as well. How does your – can you talk us through your writing process, your creative process? How, how do you get going? And, and thanks again for the pledges that are coming in. Um, just watching them at the bottom of the screen. Thank you, guys. Hey, it's, yeah, that's I, amazing. I can't just say saw a thousand dollars come in another hundred and fifty. Thanks, Debbie. Looks yeah. spectacular. So excited. So are we. Yeah. So are we. Thank you. <laughs> We're also really excited. It's, yeah. Uh, it's an amazing project to be a part of. Yeah. Um, we'll be great for the kids using animation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and and I remember. I'm going I'm to answer your question, but I'm going to. I remember the day that um, Phil mentioned it as an animation because I had been hearing about. Um, us doing this this gladiator slash braveheart type movie for probably fourteen years, <laughs> and Phil went on holiday. And there's a one of our producers, Rita, was around at the time. And um, Phil was coming back the next day. And I, the day he came back, I said to Rita, I said, whenever Phil goes away, he always comes back. You know, it's <laughs> like he, it's almost like going to the mountaintop and, and listening again and sort of getting re envisioned. I said he's going to come back. He's going to burst the door open. And say, guys, this is what we're doing. <laughs> and sure enough, he 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 called Rita to chat to her first. Um, and she came back into my office and she looked at me and she she just signaled the 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 door being kicked down. And she's like, go and go in here. And he's like, Brent, we're gonna do David as an animation. And and maybe um, I can chime in there. Just it, what an incredible thing a good, you know, being with your wife is, because it was actually my wife's idea. She's got this incredible gut feeling about things. And she first came and said, Phil, you should think about doing David as an animation. I was like, no, that's crazy. You can't, it's it's like, got to be like Braveheart or Gladiator. But yeah, as I percolated on it, I was like, whoa, that could be amazing. And and for me, as soon as Phil said it, it, it I understood it. Um, I It made sense to me, which is which is a huge thing for me. You're talking about the mm. process and what have you. Um, as, as he said, Brent, if you look at um, Tangled and Frozen, he's like, imagine we made a movie like that. And I was like, uh, it, I understood it. 
uh, the two movies instantly came to mind. One was Prince of Egypt, um, which makes sense. And then the other was Tangled. And I just, the, the, the feeling of the movie came to me. It had, it has the authenticity and the scope and the, the, the epic nature and cinematic quality of a Prince of Egypt with the heart and the humor and pacing of, of a Tangled, you know, and, mm. and I just thought, wow, that is, uh, it's not often um in this industry when you you feel like you know you're on a winner and you know we've been doing this 20 years and as as we've started this project it just feels like it was meant to be and it feels like we are in the process of what could be making a classic um and us yeah that which is which is mm. which is humbling and and quite a, an amazing privilege as well um and so for me the story process it begins um with fear and trembling. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I um, what I try and do is I always I always find that stories stories want to be something, and um, <clears throat> and I don't mm. try and I don't try and force it too soon. So so Phil told me about wanting to to do this, and it was, and I said well, I was so excited, but I was like, I need to go to Israel. Um, mm. and I need to be in the land and, um, and, and so it took a while and there's another new pledge of $500 coming in. Thank you so much. And by the way, yeah, they're just saying we've had nearly 20 pledges, new pledges was amazing. That's amazing. Thank you yeah. so much guys. Um, and so from, from the moment that Phil said, let's do this, um, it, it took a few weeks, uh, to, to organize a research trip to Israel and, I, mm. I stopped, I, I disciplined myself to not think about it until then, because I didn't want to taint. I didn't want to have an idea, follow that down the rabbit trail and sort of put, um, you know, pegs in the ground before I'd actually gone there and sort of just osmosed the land. And I'm so glad that I did that because it, it really spoke to me. It was, it was an unbelievable experience mm. going to the land. You feel the history, you know, um, you, you touch the stones in the, the river where David selected a pebble, um, uh, you know, when he fought Goliath, there's just something profound about that. And it just brought a, a, a groundedness and a reality and, and a reverence and respect, I guess, for the project. Um, and so, so that was my first step was actually not writing. It, it was being disciplined to not write. Mm, okay. <laughs> it was, it was, allowing myself to be immersed in the world. And then obviously then reading the accounts of David, um, reading some, uh, you know, Bible studies on it. And then it's a case of, so for me, uh, you get some writers who sit down and they write, my writing looks like this <laughs> really, or, or it's me sitting in a bath or it's me looking out the window. Um, 90, 95% of my writing is thinking. And then there's 5% of writing. So I can, write for 15 minutes in a, in a day and get up and feel <laughs> completely satisfied because that 15 minutes was, um, you know, was the result of a lot of processing and work. And a super quick question for you, because I've, I'm just going to chime in yeah, if I don't mind, because yeah, yeah. I've watched Brent and his creative process. And Brent, I wanted to ask you about how, you, how do you use music in your creative process? And also, because David wrote half the Psalms, we know he was an incredible musician and he was an incredible songwriter and singer. And so obviously, in, particularly in this story, one is how do you use music in your creative process and how awesome is it for you that this has got such an authentic music base? Yeah. yeah maybe just talk to that. I love the fact that we're doing it as a musical because I actually, so I love, I love Disney movies. Let me put that out there, but I'm now going to diss them a little bit <laughs> <laughs> because I've always struggled a little bit with the fact that um, characters burst into song <clears throat> and there's no real reason for it other than to have song there which is fantastic and that's their formula but what excited me about david was like actually he is a singer you know the reason that he was brought to mm. saul's court was because he was a musician so in our story there's a story reason that there's there's songs um another page of a thousand dollars thank you uh so it's it's really exciting to me as a storyteller and as a filmmaker that actually when when he's singing in the story, we're going to have a song. You know, we will make it uh, like uh, a big musical number. We'll go beyond just him just singing. There will be choreography and, and amazing things. But um, uh, yeah, it's really exciting. And I, music is a huge inspiration for me. I'll often just listen, listen to songs that move me. 
and I'll find an I'll find an emotional space that resonates with me as like that is how I want to feel in this moment in the movie and that little music will have brought me there and then I'll try and write towards that emotion um so absolutely I use it it's it's one of my key um key inspirations actually. and one of the things I was saying I think I've said it on every live stream <clears throat> Brent but you know it's um if they can make a musical like the greatest showman on PT Barnum like surely we've got to make a great musical on a character like David who was literally one of the world's best and well, most well-known songwriters we're sitting on such incredible raw material to work from mm -hmm. um yeah so i i'm so excited about the music side cuz i've just watched Brent work and how much music is integral to his creative process whatever and bring that into a David context i think it's it's amazing it's very exciting yeah and we've already started writing some music and you guys are going to love it yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brent i wanted to just mention yeah, the please. timeline thing i was going to okay? yeah i was going to go um, there, yeah. the one of the things that i struggled with early days uh, before i get there to read this yeah is it Kate or Katie Barker says I'm so happy it's going to be a musical this brings pure joy to my heart through every tragedy I've endured in my life writing music with God's help has been such a saving piece of my life yeah. that's so wonderful to hear and it reminds me when the Angel Studio um guys came to Cape Town um I sat in the in the studio and played them some of the songs and they 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 made me they were blown away by it and then their wives came and they made me played for their wives and I, I and I explained this piece of this music and I played it and then I looked and the one wife was just in tears she was like that's got to be in the movie I said well I don't know if it's going to be in the movie because that's part of the story process you create and you see if what she says no it must be in the movie people need to hear this <laughs> so so it's really exciting but um <clears throat> one of the challenge the big challenges I faced early days was Phil didn't want to tell just the story of David and Goliath and uh, that's the story that everybody knows but um if if you read in the bible like goliath comes up in the second chapter after we hear about david i believe there's another 38 chapters of david after that um mm -hmm. so it's it's really goliath is just the the beginning of david's story you know um and while i was writing if you need to read anything just yeah can i read that yeah, that's yeah. cool so from there yeah, a while i I just got on and I'm so glad it's a musical knowing that David is such a wonderful psalmist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as you were saying, he wrote half the psalms. I watched the demo and he was singing Hebrew Aramaic and I wish there were subtitles. By the way, that song he was singing in Hebrew, just so you guys know, was The Lord is My Shepherd. It was the 23rd Psalm. Mm. So yeah, that song you're hearing that he's singing in the demo is actually The Lord is My Shepherd in Hebrew, um, which is a cool thing. Yeah, so, so with trying to write the script, um I kept <laughs> my office was right next to Phil and I'd 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 be wrestling in my head what to do and I'd go to his office and I'm like Phil it's so much easier if it's David you know if the end of the movie <laughs> is David versus Goliath yeah. that's the you know that's what I can write towards plus there's very little in the bible beforehand so I can make everything up yeah <laughs> um but that's he's like no but I want to tell um can I tell what the yeah, yeah timeline the timeline is, is. Definitely, so, definitely. so Phil want he's like he was very clear he wants to do it from shepherd to king um and and that's the the line and um i think there's a graphic that we've got so what i got one of our graphic designers um simon to do for me as one of the first things was to do a timeline for me of um every significant thing that happened um in the bible for for david um angel dudes if you if you're able to bring up that graphic oh there we go um so this is the timeline um of the the on the left there is when david was shepherd uh all the way to the right um when he becomes king and this I printed out it's like 2 meters long um and and stuck it on my wall and uh you, you can't see where I point but basically uh Goliath you see there the third square along is where he kills Goliath everything thereafter is is what happens uh before he becomes king this is this is all in the middle and then there's a whole another slide <laughs> which takes us to king so the challenge was and if we can go to the wide again where you can see that whole thing i'll just sit and look at this thing and i i had a it was printed uh, on a on plast uh, with a clear thing doesn't matter uh, so and i had a pen and i tried to draw a line and track what is the story because you cannot tell all of this you know this is not a this is not a documentary and it's not a word for word um telling of the bible it's we want to entertain so so it's like okay how can i extract a thread that we can track from shepherd to king 
And that's been, that was one of the huge <laughs> challenges. And the way that I've been thinking about it recently, because it's, it's going to be, we're going to leave stuff out that you're going to say, why did they leave that out? <laughs> it's because we can't fit everything in. And I was thinking about like World War II movies. You think of a movie like Dunkirk, you know, someone could say, that's just not accurate. You know, where's Hitler? Um, but but that movie chose to focus on a certain beach on a certain couple of days and there's no Churchill, there's no Hitler, there's no all sorts of, you know, but each movie focuses on what that movie is trying to do. Mm -hmm. And and what I said at the beginning was um, a story wants to be something. And there was one guy in our story department early on, his name was Aaron, and he said something which, is, which st stuck with me. He said, you need to let the story and, and the themes of the story emerge through the writing process and through the story process. If you have a message that you're, as you come into the story, this is the message we want to get across, he says, then it's propaganda. Mm. You're, you're forcing it to tell something. And I love, uh, and I love that bit of advice because it freed, it freed me up at the time to not worry about, okay, well, what is the, what is the message? And, and I have, I have let go of the fact that um, it is my or your responsibility for uh, any sort of conviction or lesson or inspiration yeah. to happen through the story. That is, our job is to to tell an authentic and honest and inspiring and, and entertaining story, and it is you know it's God or the Holy Spirit to yeah. deposit something in in people's hearts, mm -hmm. and, and that's a that's a wonderfully freeing thing. So what I can say at this point in time is. We don't fully know what the theme of the movie is yet because we're still in the process, but we're discovering it as it, as it goes. And it's really exciting to do that. Um, uh, it, it, go ahead. No, I was going to say, talking about discovering, because um, just so you know, we've been working on the movie for two years. Um, I'm going to come to your point. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going off on a tangent. I'm going to come back to it. But created incredible artworks. We've done a lot of the pre, the, the not pre-production, the development of the movie. So character development, location development. On previous uh, live streams, we've gone into quite a lot of detail on the four trips we did to Israel, working with archaeologists like Dr. Petrovich and just really going into depth. And, you know, it was a lot of fun going on those trips and just getting into the depth of the, the storytelling. But um, what I wanted to get onto, Brent, was what you were just talking about. We're still in the process. So Having worked on the story for over two years, and we on we yeah, finished five, five years. Five years. Um, <laughs> it might sound odd to say we're still in the process, but I wanted to talk about what makes great movies great. And there's a there's a saying that good is the enemy of great. And I think Brent, if you could go into where we get into this iterative process and the role of storyboarding mm. and animatics, mm. and why are we keeping on going at the moment? Yeah. Because um, it's so important to getting a great story across. So. I just want to say at the moment, if you've just joined us, and then Brent will answer my question, is we're working closely at the Angel Studios to try to build a community and ascertain mm -hmm. an interest in this movie. And for those of you who have just joined, if you go to angel.com slash David, that's where you can find out more about the project. And if you want to support, you can pledge by showing an interest. It's not yet We're not yet at a finance raising stage, but the interest is looking good. And, and there it is on the screen. At the moment, we've had pledges of up to $10.5 million. And what excites me more than the dollars is the number of people, so 11,600 nearly. And that means just that army of uh, that community that's building, that, that's going to be behind the projects, what excites me. But if you'd like to support, um, and, and we really, I, I would love to do it as a community, um, you can go to angel.com slash David. But the question Brent's going to answer is, um, thanks, there's a new pleasure of $1,000. Thank you so much, eh? Um, but... But good is the enemy of great, Brent, and we've been working on the script for five years. We've finished draft three. You're on draft four. Why are you carrying on? Why are you reiterating? And what's the purpose of storyboarding and animatics in your process, in our process? The demo that you watched at the beginning, if you, if you, if you were around and if you've watched the demo, that was take 22 <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, of just that five minutes. I went through 22 iterations to sort of get to that point. And what you see playing here is some of the uh, animatic uh, and storyboards that we did last year. So you start by writing it on the page and uh, then the next step is storyboarding, which allows you to, to see what your movie um, looks like, what it feels like, like relatively cheaply compared to animation and what have you. So this is from uh, the, the draft that existed at the beginning of last year this draft no longer exists <laughs> and we, we were actually two drafts beyond this but you can see 
Um, I'm not saying there's not going to be a lion fight, who knows, but um, by, by doing this, by creating it, by us being able to watch it, we can get a sense of um, how well the story is telling, how well the pacing is going, the, the, the tone of it. Um, is, it too, is it too scary? Is it too childish? You know, um, it answers so many questions for us. So it's tricky for me to, <laughs> to actually talk because I'm watching. It's like, oh, I remember that. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but from that storyboard, you do, like that one we just showed, you get a great sense of, like what I liked about that storyboard was the sense of energy and action you got so a storyboard helps you translate from written word. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, and it, it feels like um, it feels like we're climbing a mountain. Um, that and each step, uh, each step takes us uh, an, another, you know, another layer up until hopefully we reach the top. Um, oh, thanks, Kelly. Passion for God plus talents and creative vision equals the David movie. Oh, that's lovely. I got <laughs> shivers when you, <laughs> when you said that. That's, that's so awesome. wonderful. Yeah, so. So iteration really is, and it's also um, on the, the Legend of the Sky Kingdom, we had this, this wonderful um, guy who was our <laughs> junk librarian. He, he, um, and, and for those of you who are just joining, the, the Legend of the Sky Kingdom was made all from junk objects. And actually, I didn't show them. These are some of the, these are some of the characters from that. So this is a monkey. Uh, uh, this is one of the guards. And you can see they're just made from uh, bits and pieces of, of junk. And he, uh, he came up with this phrase because uh, we had this, this door that was full of nails and it, it was supposed to be um, quite a scary thing. And he said, so if we want to make something look fiery, <laughs> so he, he coined this phrase fiery and we've, we've, we've had it ever since in Sunrise that we are not fiery, we are not afraid. Um, and so the story process and the iterative, iterative, iterative process, you, you can't be fiery. <laughs> you can't be afraid of change. There's a there's a phrase in the industry which which I hate, but it is true, which is kill your darlings. Um, you write something that you love, you even storyboard something that you love, but the process uncovers something that that means it must go. <clears throat> and uh, the demo that you watched helped me get get through that because I I killed <laughs> ma I killed many darlings. <laughs> um, yeah, were you going to say something there? No, no. It's just that's the why I was asking about the animatic and the storyboard process because mm. it just helps you hone in and hone in and hone in. Yeah, which I think is it's a way that we can watch. We 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 want to watch the movie as many times as we can before you watch it. You know, so so that we can refine it, and so it's the quickest way um, for us to to get to, to figuring out what's working and what's not working. Um, mm. Yeah. We've, we've talked a lot. I mean, I don't know if the team behind the scenes have got any of the questions they could post. It'd be <clears> quite cool to see if we can answer or give a stab at answering any of the questions. If you've got any questions you want to pull up, um, please do. Um, so, and while they're just pulling up the first question, for those of you joining again, if you want to just find out more about the project and support, you can go to angel.com slash David. Um, and there's quite a bit more information about the project. Okay, so um, from Faith Southers, will the story cover David's adult life or will it focus on him as a kid? So Brent, maybe you can just talk to that, that timeline again. Yeah, but yeah. it'll be both. So we meet him as a shepherd. Uh, Goliath is taken care of kind of in the first <laughs> third of the movie. Uh, and then uh, we see him as an adult. And actually, that's the... What I'm really excited about within that is, you know, Goliath is really the inciting incident in yeah. in david's in david's journey because um up until that point uh things have gone gone along quite smoothly it is that moment that causes saul's uh jealousy, jealousy yeah. to to start rising and actually that's that's really the heart of the story is this the this king who is jealous and this uh, you know anointed king who is and, and it's a contrast of these two two leaders um two kings who are both anointed and um, yeah, so, it's, so, so there's a lot of adult David in there, can, but we're not going to Bathsheba. Yeah. <laughs> Before we answer that question, can I just say one thing on the previous question super quickly? Um, I was just talking with my kids last night, and we were just talking about God's work in people's life. So I was quickly talking about David, Joseph, and Moses. And all three of those guys had a dream. So Joseph had a dream, and then suddenly he's sold as a slave and he goes to jail. It seems like quite a dismal journey away from his dream, but God is got a plan and is working on his heart, circumcising his heart. And then at the right time, he he, he steps into his dream um, in one day, actually, in his case. It says he hardly had time to shave and change. And he was before Pharaoh. And then by that evening, he was president of the most powerful nation on earth. 
And Moses tries to free his people, then he ends up in the desert for 40 years, but then he comes back later. David, so talking to Brent's point, he's anointed as king. He's got this incredible, um, he, he, Samuel's anointed him, he's got this promise over him, and then he ends up in the wilderness for seven years. So it's quite an interesting part of his story. How did he, because I think us as humans, that's so much of what we go through in life. We have a dream, we have a passion for something, we have a vision, and then it just seems to go south. Um, and, and what do we do in that moment? And I hope David's life and this story will inspire people, you know, to keep going and come out the other side and, and step into their calling or their destiny. Mm -hmm. um, so it is from kid to adult, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I saw that, that the, the next question that came up was, sorry, about, yeah, no, no, it's all good. Do you have anyone uh, we may have heard of in mind to do the voice work? Amazing project. Thank you, John. Um, so yes and no, uh, I'll, I'll speak to the, the voice. I'm very keen for the voice cast to be as authentic as possible. Uh, so we're going to be casting a lot within Israel and then sort of mining Hollywood for any Israeli actors. And there really are some wonderful ones. I'm nervous to say names because you might think yeah. they're attached or not, but no one is attached, but we absolutely are, um, we actually were starting to have a conversation today about casting. Yeah. I was like, no, it's too soon, uh, but apparently not because people want to know. <laughs> um, so we're looking for auth authenticity. Um, and if that comes with a name, then that is also fantastic. Can I read this one? Yes. Angela, are the costumes going to be historically accurate? So often I see Goliath's armor depicted incorrectly, which is unfortunate because the Bible describes it in explicit detail. So just to say to that, we have got, you, you know, if you get the internet, we've got someone called the Linternet who was actually on last week's um, live stream. And just to say, Angelo, we are going into great depths. We, as I was saying, we've done four trips to Israel. I mentioned a guy called Dr. Petrovich, who's an incredible historian, and he went on one of the trips with us. And a, our, one of our art directors, a guy called Linton, his whole job is research. And he's like the research police and comes out with incredible facts that blow my mind that we didn't even know. So we, we're coming off that base. What we want it to be is very authentic. Um, and, and, and we're coming off that base of his work. Um, but we want it to be authentic, but it is animation. So we're going to have to take some creative license, but you will feel the authenticity and the reality. If I can just say, and Brent can maybe speak to it more, in that demo you watched, like literally every flower and grass is actually literally is based off a real flower and a real plant in Israel. So in that demo, when you look at those flowers and plants, those aren't just something that came out of our imagination. They came out of research. I mean, Brent, I don't know if you want to talk to that a bit. Yeah, no, uh, you, you're saying all the things I was going to say is <clears throat> it's that word authenticity. What, what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand that world and, and research it as accurately as possible so that the foundation that we're building from is correct. <clears throat> and as Phil said, this is animation. We are going to be exaggerating things, but the, the, the base from which something is designed um, is going to have been, you know, th to the best of our knowledge, accurate, um, <clears throat> which is really exciting. So um, can I say that Gol Goliath's armor will be accurate? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> it will be, we will do the research and we will, we will plus it accordingly to, to what is uh, appropriate for, for, for the format in which we're making the project, if that makes sense. But yeah, just to talk about Goliath, I mean, we had such interesting <clears throat> debates because we've got incredible historians who've got opposing views on the height of Goliath <clears throat> and the interpretation in the Bible. So it was really interesting. So we're going into a lot of detail about even things like Goliath's height. And then obviously because it's animation, we can exaggerate yeah, it. Yeah. Like if I can just speak to that and I'll read this one. Uh, What's most important to me in terms of accuracy or authenticity is that the the spirit uh, and the meaning of a moment comes across as true. Um, it, I, I don't believe it makes a difference if Goliath was um, seven feet, eight feet, nine feet, twelve feet, fifteen feet. The the key thing was that God had the victory that day. The key thing was that it was an impossibility for de for a young you know, a young shepherd, whether he was 13, 15, 17, whether he was a fighting man or not, the key thing was that that David himself said, you come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the name of God. That's what's important there. And so so what I'm hoping is people don't sort of trip up over, oh, no, he, should, he was supposed to be nine foot six, but no, he should have been nine foot four, but you made him 27 feet 19. I, we haven't decided how big, but yeah. <laughs> are, we, are we accurate in the depiction of... Um, 
the spiritual truth in that moment. Shall I pick up this question? I haven't read it, so yes. yes. <laughs> From Kelly, can you elaborate on why you decided not to go through the Hollywood, through Hollywood to distribute this in the future? Yeah, that's a wonderful question, by the way. Um, the one thing I've seen in any business, whether in agriculture or in the media, that if whoever controls the distribution ultimately, in my opinion, ends up being the head of the project. Um, so the one thing I felt about the David project is that we really needed to hang on to creative control um, for the reason that we want, to some of the reasons we're discussing, we want the movie to be accurate and authentic and, and amazing in that sense. So that's one thing. But the other thing is also, with, as I was saying at the beginning of the Angel Studios, guys, I just loved when the world zigs, they zag. And it's one of, the, one of our spirits is to think out the box, to think differently. And, and I think that's how you can have a great victory. When David, I'll just say it, I'll use it with David's own story. When he went to fight Goliath, well-meaning people put on Saul's armor, swords, swords and shields and spears. And he had to have the courage to take off all that armor, the traditional warfare, and go with his sling to fight the giant. And so I think working with Angel Studios is a slingshot approach to distributing the movie, if I can say that. And I think that's the very magic of it, that it's going to make it so powerful. And yeah, I hope that's making sense, but I just feel that that's, that's one of the reasons we're not going to try to go through the traditional Hollywood system, but we're going to take a slingshot approach, not a Saul's armor approach to making the movie and to distributing the movie. Yeah. Mm. Um, we're getting near the end of the hour, but if there's one or two more questions, we can take them. Otherwise, I'm just going to quickly do a wrap on how we're going on, on pledges. And um, let me just quickly talk to the pledges. And if there's one more question, guys, please feel free to put it up. Otherwise, we'll, we'll end off with a demo shortly. Um, but yeah, here's a question. Is you take this one, Brent? Well, you're going to answer it. I'm oh, going to read okay, it. You can read it. Is yeah. David going to be in theaters or will it be available for free for people that can't afford it? Say like in Africa. Oh, I love this question because this is, this is, um, one of our passions. So if, if I can just say one of our thoughts is this movie in my mind is built for cinema and for theater. But having said that, one thing we're working on with Angel Studios, we've just seen how powerful in the app that chosen, how powerful pay it forward is. We would love to take that philosophy of pay it forward and apply it to cinemas. So people in first world countries or wealthy people in third world countries can actually buy cinema spaces in, in Africa, in Asia, in South America, um, and actually to buy that cinema space, pay it forward. And then we will coordinate with Angel Studios and get and fill up those cinemas. We, we can, I got such, so excited about this because I could imagine truckloads of grade sevens, like 10, 12, 11, 12 year olds coming into the cinema in, Af in Cape Town, just talking about our city, and watching the David movie, that someone's paid it forward for them. So I'd like to do both. I'd like it to be available for in cinema for those who can afford it, they can pay. For those who can't afford it, hopefully this pay it forward model will catch fire around the world. And this, this is what, such a great question, Lisa, because that's what really excites me about Angel Studios. We've started to brainstorm this and see how we can make that work. Um, so hopefully we can achieve both. It will be in theaters, but it'll also be in theaters for free for people who can't afford it in some shape or form. That's, that's one of our goals anyway, yeah, is to, is to pay it forward. That's such an awesome question, by the way. Um, yeah, so on our pledges, if you would like to pledge and support, you go to angel.com slash Davids. And it's just been amazing, by the way. I think there's been, oh, well, there's another pledge of $300. And the guys behind the scenes were telling me, I think it's gone past $70,000 just this evening, wow. which is, yeah, it's amazing. Hey, And like one thing, our passion is to take every cent of that and get it onto, onto screen. So, and every dollar counts because we just want to push the boundaries of making a movie of, of a, an amazing quality. Mm -hmm. um, so if there are no more questions, I think we, what would be really cool, and, and I just want to close by, by saying thank you and, and just really appreciate all of you, because I know time is precious in, this, in the <coughs> modern world we live in. And for you guys to take time and listen to our story is amazing. My, my passion is we go from good to great. We tell a, an amazing story at the same level of the best of the best. And what I'm so excited about doing it is, um, and we'll take that one more question now in a yes. second. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Brent answer that. That's done. Answered. Please. Answered. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to answer it? That's it. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> Jonathan will absolutely be in the movie. Yeah. Their friendship is incredible. One thing that uh, moves me to tears almost every time I read them is David's lament for Saul and Jonathan when they die. 
when he says they were swifter than eagles and stronger than lions, like um, that lament that he writes for them is just so moving. Yeah, so Jonathan is the most incredible character and is absolutely in the movie with David. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, but to end off, I'm just so excited about building this movie with a community and building it with you guys and being on a journey together. I think I just want to end by saying as you come up the stairs of our studio, the Fellowship of the Ring, the, the, in the Lord of the Rings, it was a group of people that got somewhere. It wasn't one individual. And as you come up the stairs, I love Gimli saying where it says, certainty of death, small chance of success, what are we waiting for? And I think that's the beauty when you get together in a group. You can take on extreme odds and big odds and conquer the giants. And I'm just so excited to connect with you guys as a community and build what I hope will be one of the world's most incredible legacy projects ever made from a film perspective. Yeah. So, Brent, I don't know if you want to say anything to end off. No, thank you. Well, also just thank you. Thanks for taking the time to listen to us. It's such, such an amazing project to talk about. It's really yeah, you can, like I hope you feel the the enthusiasm and the passion that we have. We can't wait to make it, and I can't wait to to share it with the world. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who didn't see the demo at the beginning, please hang around. It's five minutes long, and there's a very short little video afterwards. So if you can wait to watch the demo, it'll give you a sense of the quality. And have a look for those flowers because those flowers in the demo actually exist in Israel. Um, and one other thing, which is fantastic, I love, is the the stone that. David slings and the stone that he picks up at the end or is modeled off a stone that we picked up from the Valley of Elah in, in Israel where, where David would have selected a stone against yeah. you know, to fight Goliath. Fight Goliath. So, so authenticity. Yeah. <laughs> and for those of you who didn't hear it, when you just watch the demo now and you hear him singing at the end in, in Hebrew, that's the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, good night and good day to you guys in the USA. Thank you for joining us. and. Enjoy this, this uh, screening of the demo. Look into my eyes. Do you see fear? You come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the name of the God of Israel. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> right between the eyes! Did you see that? Anyone? Uh, of course not. Okay, then. One more time. <laughs> tally, tally, no, oh. no. Oh. I'm trying to protect us from this Philistine. Oh. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, not that way. Oh. Ah. Ah. Come on. Ah. Back to your mom. Right, Philistine. Oh, wait. Right between the eyes. Oh, of course. That one you saw. Tally! <laughs> Tally, no! I'm coming, girl! Shira! I will bring her home safely. <sighs> Whoa! Go. I'm almost in
Okay. What you have just watched is a concept short or a musical animated feature film on the story of David and our vision is to tell it in the same quality as movies like Tangled and Frozen. This is more than a movie, this is a movement to join people from all over the world to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release. You can show your interest in investing by going to angel.com slash David. Growing up in the wild of Africa was the most incredible experience and it was there that I bumped into the most amazing character of God and fell in love with him. At the same time, I was reading David's story and it just really struck me. On one particular canoe trip on the Zambezi River where you could canoe for days and not see a human being, I was reading the scriptures and I read, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And I thought how amazing it would be to do a film that would give people all over the world a glimpse into God's heart. We grew up on a farm that had no electricity. I only saw my first film when I was 14 years old and it was such an electric experience. I was blown away by the power of film and the power of story to connect with people and move people. And from that day, I became passionate to tell a story on the life of David. The question is, can a group of farmers from Africa make a global hit that's gonna reach the world? This is in and of itself an incredible David versus Goliath story. There's an African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And in order to tell a story as big as David, we need people from all around the world to come together. Over the last 20 years, Jackie and I have just been blown away by how God has miraculously drawn talent to us. Now we have the most awesome, high quality team. Like Nathan Stanton, who spent 22 years at Pixar. Jonas Myron, a Grammy Award winning musician. Borja Mentora, a Disney animation alumni. Other talent from massive films like Big Hero 6, Tangled, Finding Nemo, Zootopia, Moana, Prince of Egypt, and many more. Our first breakout hit is Jungle Beat, an incredible and beautiful show. On our YouTube channel, we get over 2 billion views a year. We've got 7 million subscribers. We also recently released our first animated feature film called Jungle Beat the Movie. And incredibly, it was on Netflix's top 10 for over two weeks, both live action and animated feature films in the US. We are also doing a theatrical release of Jungle Beat the Movie in China later this year and are in production of Jungle Beat the Movie 2. What really excites me is if you take Jungle Beat the Movie, we produce that for $5 million. And I'd really encourage you to go and watch on Netflix to see the quality of movie we produce for that price. And just imagine the quality of movie we could produce on David with the proper budget. With David, we considered the route of engaging with Hollywood and there is significant interest down that route. But we really felt that from a creative point of view, we need to stay the head and not the tail of this project. And it's a slingshot, like David went with a slingshot to fight Goliath. We really believe that the strategy needs to be outside the Hollywood system for it to work. In this vein, we are thrilled to be working with Angel Studios for distribution. Angel Studios did the TV series The Chosen, which has become the world's biggest TV series on the life of Jesus Christ. The Chosen has generated hundreds of millions of views and tens of millions of dollars. 
We've already got $19 million of investments and need another $35 million to complete this project. We need your help to bring God's heart to the world through the story of David. Go to angel.com slash David to show your support for this project now. And let's join together to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release.